we've come to almost the 84th day of our trade union action and uh, this is probably the biggest thing we've attempted so far a five day march from Gaul to Colombo and when you look back on those 84 days in some ways I'm not surprised that we pulled this off as well because I think over the last three months or so we've really get gathered strength the, the academic community has come together in, in unbelievable ways and I don't think anybody believed that when we started this trade union action on the 4th of July that we would be able to do what we've done so far but that's on the positive side but when you think about the other aspect of it it is why is it necessary for us to do this and that that's actually pretty sad when you think about the fact that uh, as university teachers as academics we've had to stay away from our work for 84 days do these kinds of things walk on the streets go from door to door address mass public rallies just to get the attention of the government and that's that's actually a pretty sad indication of the kind of situation we are in currently because it it appears that the only way you can get the attention of the authorities is 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 through this kind of thing there's no no space for a constructive dialogue where you, you can discuss things and you can come to some kind of a compromise come to some kind of an agreement those spaces seem to have shrunk and that pushes people i mean academic the academic community is probably the most uh, especially in sri lanka <laughs> in the past we've been the most passive group we've, we've not really been this way we've not really been active if it's driven us to the streets it's, a, it's I think a clear indication of the, the shrinking of the space that's available to actually discuss things and have a, have a conversation, a constructive conversation and come to a kind of a mutual agreement. So I think that's, that's, that's pretty evident and that is what has, what has driven us to this. We, 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 we not, we, we, we've engaged in negotiations, we've gone for every discussion that we've been asked to go to. We've not pulled out from any of those, even though some of those discussions didn't end with any kind of outcome, specific outcome, even though so we've been insulted throughout these 82 day, 80 odd days by various ministers and other representatives of the government have attacked us mercilessly as in, 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 very, uh, in very ugly ways. We've still not pulled out from talking to, the, talking to those in authority. And yet, those talks have not really got us anywhere. I mean, despite all what the, what the government media is saying, the government is here to offer us anything concrete. And I think that's the bottom line. And I, and I, think, I, I think most people don't realize this. Right? And it's, that's also because we don't have access to the media, which is why we have to do things like this in order to have our side of the story heard by the people or even walk on the streets because that's the only way we can get our side out well yeah what i'm saying is that there's a that, that what appears to have happened is a complete breakdown of, of how things function how things function in a normal society i mean it, you would expect that if we have problems we sort it out within the university we can go to our vice chancellors we can go to the university grants commission and we sort those things out we sort it out in faculty boards we sort it out at senates we sort it out at councils and we would have trust in those mechanisms i think what are, what what is happening today is an indication that those mechanisms can no longer be trusted because uh, because of the politicization that has taken place and we can no longer be sure that our voices are represented at those higher levels so then we have had to i mean you have the bizarre situation of the a minister calling a meeting with vice chancellors and asking the vice chancellors to please listen to the academics i mean a minister shouldn't have had, shouldn't have to do this that, that that's that's how things should be but we, we are actually asking a minister to tell the vice chancellors not to be politically motivated. I mean, yeah. So recently, uh, Futa, your president, Nirmal Ranjit Devasiri, he said in a rally that uh, they have tried 
to make the government listen or to change the government. If that cannot be done, he said, like, we need to try and change the people. What do you think of that statement? Well, actually, I think that was one of the most brilliant things that Nirma said. I, I think his speech that day in Kandy was, was really good. It was one of the best speeches he had made. Uh, he has made so far in this in the in the course of this trade union action and i think it's very true because uh, you know i mean it's tried to say this but you elect the government you deserve right you you uh, let's let's forget the government for a minute think of our or oh, at, at a much more micro level think of uh, at the department faculty or senate level. we've ceded our power we've ceded our authority and we we we, we for the well, at least up till now, we have not used our authority or our position to fight for not just our rights but for any right. And and I think what 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 Nirma said is absolutely true. I mean, I think over the last few months we have changed. I don't think when we go back to universe to work, we'll have, we won't be the same. We are not the people we were uh, 84 days ago. Uh, I think we would function differently as well and maybe that through this process if we have changed if this continues for a little while longer more people might change and realize this that you know I'll, we have ceded authority and power to those to, to, to the politicians and to those in positions of power and we, we, we have let that happen so why I mean you know instead of trying maybe we need to first change the way we relate to authority, the way we relate to power and the way we relate to our elected representatives. I mean, the last 84 days, I don't think there has been a day where at least one newspaper has not talked about education and the crisis in education. I think if we just do a pro proper search of what has been, not a day has passed without something being said. Right? And, and education has become a topic that everybody is talking about. And I think we did that, right? And, and I think we've managed to get people asking questions at least. We've got people to ask ask why why they have to pay so much to put a child to school, why they have to put so much money into maintaining a child in school. I think people are beginning to ask those questions, whereas we previously they thought, okay, this is what they have to do. And so I think we have been amazingly successful in that sense in getting that conversation going. Uh, and even more importantly, getting that conversation going within the academic community. I think the changes that we that have taken place within the academic community itself during the last 80 odd days is, is a significant achievement.